Everyone always talks about the glamorous parts of being a freelancer. Being your own boss, making your own schedule, being able to work from anywhere in the world, and obviously, making a lot of money. I talk about these things too, and honestly, being a freelancer can be awesome. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the side of freelancing that nobody really talks about online. The ugly side of freelancing. Now I'm gonna start off by saying that a lot of the things I'm gonna mention in this video, while they're gonna be pretty bad if you experience them for yourself in your own freelance journey, for the most part, most of them will be avoidable. So while I won't hold back and I'll go into detail about some of these you know, ugly, uh, bad situations you might run into in your own freelance business, I'm gonna give you some tips and advice for how you might be able to avoid them so that your freelance journey can be as smooth sailing as possible. Sound good? Let's get into it. We'll start with an easy one, and surprisingly, as obvious as I think this one should be for anyone getting into freelancing, it's one that a lot of people seem to be shocked about when they first realize that it's the case. Starting a freelance business is gonna be hard work. A lot of people get this one twisted. Why? Well, maybe it's because of all the get rich quick type of videos out there. There's so many like copy and paste, no skill required videos that are, are painting this picture for people that really isn't that accurate. The reality is that if you wanna start a successful freelance business that makes you a lot of money and is gonna be sustainable over a long period of time, it's gonna be hard work. Hey, it might be possible that you start an ultra profitable freelance business and it's super easy for you, but the reality is, at least in my opinion, that it's probably unlikely and it's gonna take some hard work to get things off the ground. You can make it easier for yourself though. Here's a couple steps that you can take before you ever get started with your freelance business that will ensure you're making it as easy as possible and increasing the chances that it's gonna be easier for you to become successful. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have some sort of marketable skill or work experience. If you don't, this is your step one. Go and figure out what that skill's gonna be, learn it, master it, and get it to the point where it's ready to be sold as a service on Fiverr or any other freelance website. Second thing you're gonna to wanna to do after you figure out what your skill is, is to figure out where you're gonna sell it. Like, is it gonna be on a freelance platform like Fiverr and Upwork or your own website? And how you're gonna sell it. How are you gonna package it? What are your pricing options gonna be? Figure out all that stuff before you start. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to think about before you start is figure out what your income goals are. Do you have a set amount of money you need to make every month for this to be worth your time? Is this something you're going after as a full-time venture? Is this a side hustle? Figure out what your income goals are so that when you start, you can target those goals and try to achieve them. The fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to think about, and this is a big one, is before you start, figure out and come to an agreement with yourself on how many hours per day, per week, or per month you're gonna be able to commit to your freelance business. Because let's face it, all of us have families, friends, fiancés, wives. You need to be prepared to balance all of those things and make sure that you have the time and the ability to make the time to complete these projects once the business starts rolling in. That's an important one because you don't want to have a mismatch or an unbalanced situation happening there. And the fifth thing you need to do before you start is to understand that at least in the early days while you're getting things up and running and figuring things out, you might have to work at odd hours of the day that you might not otherwise wanna work in, right? Like you might get orders in, you might forget about orders, you might have to work in the evenings, early in the mornings, depending on time zone differences. It's gonna take you some time to figure that out before you have it humming and you can finish work in the time blocks that make the most sense for you. If you can check all these five boxes of the five tips I just listed for you before you start your freelance business, it should be smoother sailing and not so hard to get started running your own successful freelance business. The second ugly truth about freelancing is that no matter how good you are, bad clients are going to happen. And how you deal with those bad clients is gonna have a big impact on your long-term success as a freelancer. You might be the nicest person in the world and a joy to work with, but there's gonna come a time where you face a client who's the polar opposite. It might be that they're rude, maybe they're just impossible to please, maybe they're asking for an unreasonable amount of free revisions, maybe they're asking for you to complete work that wasn't included in the original scope, or maybe they're just horrible, mean people to work with. 
Odds are, you're going to run into these types of people at some point, we all do. And it really does suck because a bad rating on sites like Fiverr or Upwork can really hurt your profile. And if not a bad rating, a refund can really hurt your profile or even your bottom line, your wallet, right? Like you don't want to refund work that's been completed already. And if you get into a situation where someone's abusing you for a ton of revisions, that might not hurt your wallet or your rating, but that's going to take a hit in your free time, right? Like you didn't budget for all these revisions, it just wasn't included. These types of clients happen, right? And they might fall into one of the scenarios I just listed, but it helps to be prepared so that you know how to deal with them. Here's a couple things you can do to help you resolve sticky situations with your freelance clients or avoid them altogether. The number one tip for resolving and avoiding sticky situations from even happening in the first place is to make sure you're setting proper expectations with your buyers before they place an order with you and before you begin working on a project. Based on all the people I've spoken with, including my own freelance business, setting or not setting the proper expectations is the number one reason for unhappy clients who have missed expectations on what is included, what's to be delivered, it just leads to really terrible situations if you don't get on the same page before you engage in a project together. The second major tip that's gonna help you avoid problem clients is to make sure, especially if you're selling on a site like Fiverr or Upwork, that your profile and your gigs accurately describe you, your abilities, and the services you offer. All too many times I see people making these profiles that depict a person, an expert, uh, an area of expertise that just does not align with what they're actually good at. And what's gonna happen is people are gonna place an order and then when they realize they placed an order with someone who's not who they say they are, they're gonna be unhappy. The work's not gonna get completed to the standard they were expecting and it's gonna lead to bad ratings, refunds, and really just a huge pain in your, right? it's gonna suck. And the third thing that I do personally a lot, and this saves me a ton of time and helps me avoid a ton of revisions requests, is to have a section, whether it's on your freelance website or on Fiverr or Upwork, an FAQ section that clearly states and outlines your revision policy. This is a big one, because for me, a lot of the times clients will ask for revisions above and beyond what I deem reasonable. So I clearly state how many revisions are included with every order, and I clearly state that if you want me to make more revisions above and beyond that, it's gonna be a paid revision. It's gonna cost you money. This is the best because whenever you get into a situation where it's like a he said, she said, they thought there are more revisions, you can just direct them to the FAQ section, say, hey, listen, this was clearly stated. Unless you're willing to abide by the rules of the game that I've outlined here, you're gonna to have to mark this order as completed. And this has saved me a lot of times. The third ugly truth about running a freelance business is that regardless of whether you like it or not, there's gonna come a time where you're gonna to have to get up and work when you really don't want to. And I think this one just comes with the territory and comes with running your own little small business. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the couch, it's like 10 o'clock at night, me and my fiance are watching a movie and panic sets in. I look at my phone and I, I realize I had totally forgotten about an order that's due first thing the next morning or even that night. I'm running to my office and I have to fire up my computer, get my brain into the right headspace and do some work late at night or at a time where I wasn't expecting and I had just forgot. It sucks, but it happens. And the moral of the story here is that as a freelancer, you need to realize that you either need to plan your freelance business around your life or your life around your freelance business. If you're not focused on one or the other, you're gonna run into situations where a deadline's coming up, you're not prepared, and you're gonna be stressing out. But not to worry, here are a couple things you can do that'll help you better manage your freelance business with the rest of your life. The first thing that's really gonna help is to set blocks of time throughout your week, every week, that are dedicated to completing freelance projects and abide by those time blocks. Get the work done in those blocks of time, don't procrastinate, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to manage the rest of your time. And the second thing you can do is to make sure you're setting your delivery timelines, the project timelines, 
long enough so you have enough time in the event that something happens that was unforeseen, you weren't planning for, and causes you to be in a time crunch. If you set your timelines long enough that that's not a problem, you should be good to go. And the fourth ugly truth about freelancing that I'm gonna mention in this video applies to anyone who freelances through a major freelancing website or platform like Fiverr, or Upwork, freelancer.com, people per hour, whatever. And the ugly truth is that if you're relying on a third party platform, like one of these large ones, no matter what, at the end of the day, your success, at, to some extent, is going to be out of your control. Because on big sites that are running their own businesses, they make changes, they update their algorithm, they change their layout, they, they change their focus as a business. And sometimes these changes might impact how you do business. If you've set your business up a certain way and it's been working for four years and Fiverr rolls out a major update or a major change, it might impact you. It might impact you positively, but it might also impact you negatively. It's really out of your control because they're gonna do what they gotta do to keep their business running. This is something that I think most of us are gonna face because you know, selling on sites like Fiverr, Upwork, and wherever is a great idea. But here are two things you can do to protect yourself and give you some more peace of mind that your freelance business is safe. And the first thing is to diversify. Open accounts on multiple freelance websites. Create a Fiverr account, create an Upwork account, create a people per hour account, and work on building those all up so that if one goes down or if one makes an update that's detrimental to your business, you're okay and you have business coming in from other platforms. The second thing you can do, and this is kind of the most involved thing you can do and it's something I don't really do, I might be starting to do, is to create your own website and focus on bringing in your own freelance clients that don't go through uh, a five or an Upwork or whatever. This isn't something I really do because I personally direct all that traffic to Fiverr because I want to build up my profile there, but it's a great thing you can do if you have ambitions and you want to diversify your freelance business to really future-proof it, right? If you can build an email list of one-on-one -on -one clients that you've snagged for yourself outside of these big platforms, don't steal them from the big platforms, find them for yourself. That gives you a safety net of people you can reach out to if any one platform goes down or changes in a way that hurts your gigs. And the third thing you can do to protect yourself from being beholden to any one platform uh, isn't really even related to freelancing, but it's to make at extra or additional income streams for yourself. So take me for example, this YouTube channel has become another income stream and helps pad my bank account if anything were to happen to Fiverr or other aspects of my business. I don't know if YouTube is the, the thing for you, but there are a ton of videos both on this channel and other YouTube channels that talk about creating additional income streams. And I think that if you're someone who's into freelancing, it's always a good idea because it aligns with the goal most of us freelancers have, which is to have financial independence and not rely too much on any one entity to help us pay our bills. So what do you think? After watching this video, does any of the things I've listed change your perspective on what it might be like to be a freelancer? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, cheers.